Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can restore deleted non-solution aware flows from Power Apps or Power Automate. Now this isn't available natively, but in the last couple of weeks a new PowerShell command that's been released that will allow environment administrators the ability to restore these non-solution aware flows. I'm going to show you how I've built a couple of runbooks using these PowerShell commandlets and from these runbooks I can call them from Power Automate and indeed Power Apps so that we can easily restore these deleted flows using the Power Platform. So a lot to take in during this demonstration but uh, hopefully it gives you a little flavour of what's possible and I've also written up a blog post with a copy of those PowerShell scripts should you want to give that a go yourself. So here I am in Power Automate and you can see that I'm actually in the process of deleting a really important flow. And if I click on delete there, I've lost that flow now for good. And the only option I have currently is, it, is to raise a call with Microsoft. Now I've got another really important flow and I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one too. And those two flows have now completely gone from my default practice environment. Jumping into PowerShell, I can now show you a couple of scripts that I've written and that I've shared on my blog post. The first of which is all about getting the deleted flows from the environment and accepts a single input parameter which is for the environment name which you can retrieve from the URL of your FlowMaker. And then you'll see that I have a series of credentials um, relating to the runbook that have been commented out, so I'll maybe explain that briefly once we're on to the runbook. But for the purpose of running the PowerShell locally on my machine, I don't need any of the highlighted or commented out credential related information. I then have Add Power Apps Account, which allows me to log in to that uh, admin area within PowerShell. I have two queries which look almost identical, the first of which is getting all the flows from my particular environment that don't include the deleted. And obviously the second one is here to retrieve all the flows that do include those that have been deleted within the last 28 days. And then using this compare object commandlet, I'm able to compare those two tables in order to spot the difference and return those deleted flows as an array. So using that array, I'm able to pass that back to Power Automate, but for the purpose of uh, this solution running locally, I've also got it returning the result as a comma-separated list of flow GUIDs. So if I was to go ahead and run this now, the first thing it will do is ask me to log into my environment, which I'll go ahead and do with my existing credentials. And then by return, pretty quickly, you can see, first of all, I have that array of the flows by display name and the GUID um, for the really important flow and the another really important flow. But then I have that comma separated list of those GUIDs that I'm able to use in my second PowerShell script. So if I jump onto the second PowerShell script, you'll see that I have two input variables on this one. The first of which is that comma separated list. So you can see there I already have those two GUIDs that need to be passed in order to restore those two. And then again, that environment name. I have those credentials as before that have all been commented out, which will be required by the runbook. And then we sign in to that Power Apps admin area on, the, on PowerShell. And then you use a couple of commands, the first to split that comma separated list, so we end up with an array. And then for each of those individual GUIDs, we're simply running the restore admin flow commandlet that will allow us to restore each of those flows by passing that GUID. Now, if I go ahead and play that, as before, it'll ask me to log in. And then hopefully pretty quickly, we should get some results on screen to let us know that each of those flows have been returned. Now you see there's not actually much information that's provided, but if I jump back onto my FlowMaker portal and do a quick refresh, I should hopefully have those two flows now back in my environment. And there we go. 
So the only thing to note is both of these flows have been disabled by default, so you would need to return to them and turn them on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these two once again so that we can then use our run books. So that's both of them deleted. And I'm now going to jump on to the Azure automation area where I've created a couple of run books. So within run books, you can create scripts and I have created two, uh, two scripts, as you've already seen in PowerShell, and they're called appropriately get deleted flows and restore flows. And if I was to click on the get deleted flows and go into view code, you can see that I have this entire script as I had it running locally on my machine. The only difference being here that I no longer have this area commented out because I'm retrieving my credentials from the credential manager within this runbook area. So all that's doing is grabbing the username and, and password for an environment admin that has access to the ability to restore flows with this commandlet. If I jump back into the runbook area, you can see also I have that restore flows runbook and exactly the same if I go into view, you can see that script and specifically, I have uncommented those credentials. So where do these credentials come from? If I jump back here, you can see on the left-hand side, I have this credentials area, and if I click on that, and I go into the PP Environment Admin, which is the name I've given my credentials, you can see I have my username, and also masked out the password for that user. Another area that you need to be aware of is modules. And it's here that you install all the modules that you require to run for your online or cloud-based commandlets. And I had to install the Power Apps Admin module. You can see it's installed here. You also have to install that locally on your PowerShell environment if you're wanting to run them locally. And that's all covered in my blog post, including links to all that information if you want to find out how to install it. So the basics of that run book covered, or those two run books covered, we can now call them from within Power Automate. So I'd now like to have a look at the Power Automate solution that I've built. So if I jump back into Power Automate, you may have noticed I have a flow here, which is called Restore My Deleted Flows. Now if I go ahead and edit that flow, we can have a look at how we can call these run books. So it does use premium features. We've got some premium actions here with both the create job and get job output. And these are um, Azure automation actions. You'll see that I've got a subscription and resource group and an account, which have all been created as a result of me creating that run book. And then I have the run book name. So in this case, the get deleted flows, which will return an array of those flows that have been deleted in the last 28 days. I've enabled the wait for job to yes, so that this particular action will not complete and pass on to the next action until it's fully complete. And then you'll note that I have the input variable for the environment, which in this case is my default environment. But if you choose to run this yourself, you'll of course need to update it to use your environment. And if you just have a quick look there, you can see this is exactly where I get that environment name from. On to the second action, I'm running um, an action here to retrieve the output from the action above. So all it simply does is retrieve that JSON array of the flows that have been deleted. Then using that output that I've collected, I'm using a select action, and that's using the JSON expression to wrap the result in order to allow me to use that array as a traditional array within Power Automate. And then within the map, I've just used the expression item with the open close brackets and question mark, and then the square brackets and single quotes in order to retrieve just the flow name from that array. Once I have all of those flow names in an array, I'm able to then call my second run book, which is the one that accepts a comma separated list of those GUIDs. And you can see I've completed the same things, the subscription resource group and the automation account. I'm running the restore flows runbook this time. Again, I'm waiting for that job and my, I have my environment name, 
But the one you really want to pay attention to is the second parameter here, which is based on the join expression. So I'm taking the output from that select above and joining with a comma. I do have a final action, very much like the, the previous uh, two above. It's to get the job output, just so I can see what the outcome is of this restore flows. Now, if I was to go ahead and test this, of course, I've gone and deleted those two flows from earlier. And I'll put it into test mode, and that will allow this flow to, first of all, get the array of those two flows that have been deleted, and then get the result from the action above, perform that uh, particular action on the data with the select so that I get an array and then pass that array in the form of a comma separated list using the join expression so that I can then restore those deleted flows. Now you'll note that it does take a fair bit of time for this to complete but that's the first one completed there and I guess what we really want to pay attention to is the fact that first of all the status shows completed there's no output at this point, but if I go into the get job output result, we will see, like we saw on the local PowerShell script, the JSON array with the flow name and the display name. And then you'll note that if I go into the select here, that using that as an input, I have then performed the output so that I just get an array of those individual flow name GUIDs. Now that our second action has completed, I can go and have a look at that too. And again, we can see that the run book has succeeded. And in terms of output, very much like we saw on that PowerShell script, quite limited in terms of uh, information back, but we can see those two tables that we saw when we run that PowerShell script locally. Now, if I jump back into my flows, you'll see that again, those two flows have been restored, but this time using Power Automate. Now finally, I'm going to delete these one more time and I'm going to show you how we combine this with a Power App so that I can not only see those flows that have been deleted, but also restore those flows directly from a Power App solution. So that's both of those flows deleted and I'm going to jump now into my Power App. So it's quite a simple solution. I have a button here and when I press it, it will call a flow based on the Power App trigger that will then run the first runbook that will get all of those deleted flows. And again, you'll note that it will take 20 to 30 seconds to complete. But once that particular flow has completed, it will return into a gallery via collection, both the display name of that flow, but also the GUID or the flow name as it's referred to, that will allow me to then call my second Power Automate runbook. So I can go ahead now and select one of these flows and that will call the flow that will then restore that flow by GUID. I'm going to go and click on the second one too, which will run another Power Automate solution in order to restore the second one too. Now, this will take up to 30 seconds again. That's the first one restored. And you can see I've got a little notification at the top here and hopefully within the next couple of seconds, our second one will do exactly the same. And then we can jump back across into Power Automate and check to make sure that those flows have been restored. And there we go, that's the second one restored. Now if I jump back into Power Automate, I can do a refresh and we can see that those two flows have now been restored. So how was that actually done within Power Automate? Well, here is my restore button. And all I'm doing here, first of all, is to set a variable equal to the output of my first flow that I call, which will retrieve that JSON array. And then I'm using a trick, which I've provided a link to within my blog post, that will turn that JSON array into a collection. And then it's with that collection that I'm able to pass to my gallery, as you can see here, a collection of the deleted flows, past the gallery and very much displaying those values that are returned within that collection, the display name and the flow name. And then finally, I have a button here that runs my second flow, which is to restore my flows. It has a single input, which is the flow name, which is ultimately the GUID that gets passed. And then once that flow completes, I'm removing that item from the collection and notifying that the flow has been restored 
and then I'm simply using this expression here to rerun this button, which will of course then refresh the data based on that first flow. So if I jump back into Power Automate, here are the two solutions. The first one is all about getting the deleted flows. And if I go into edit, you can see I'm using the Power Apps trigger, basically the first version. Didn't even need to bother about up updating it to the second version. And then within that scope, I have these two actions that we saw before. The first one to call that get deleted flow um, run book, and the second one to get that output. And then I simply respond back to my Power App, wrapping that expression in JSON so that I can get that data back as, as an array. If I jump back into the flows and have a look at the second one, which is used to restore, I'll go into edit there. And I'm using the version two trigger in this scenario, basically because it's easier in order to set up the input parameters. I have the flow name, which of course I'm passing across the GUID. And I have the restore um, run book, which will take that flow GUID and pass it into that run book, which will then allow it to restore that individual flow. And so that marks the end of the demonstration. Um, very much a, a whistle stop tour of an end to end, but quite a lot to take in there. There's some PowerShell, which I've shared in my blog that you can use to restore your flows if you're an environment admin. You could of course create a run book, which will allow you then to call that PowerShell from Azure, but also you can then use Power Automate so that you can routinely call those run books as you see fit. Um, you could potentially use a Microsoft form where an end user could submit the flow name that they're wanting to restore and you could filter on that array of data that you've got back in the select. And I've shown you a power app, so how you can take that data, turn it into a power app and potentially not only view those deleted flows, but also restore them rather conveniently. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do. And uh, thanks very much for watching to the end. See you again sometime. Cheers.